You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Excited to be here today, excited to record another episode. Today's is our exercise edition, our training Thursday. We're going to talk about a topic that just popped up the other day. It's one of those things that I don't talk about enough, and that's how your posture when you're seated at your desk, when you're seated just in general at home and also in your car affects everything. It affects your posture. That affects your um, everything from your mood to your back pain to your tight joints and all of those other issues. And I've just seen so many people lately in my practice with neck-based issues, with really uh, numbness in the hands all the way down the shoulder. So I want to go over that today, how we can really work on and fix that lower back and make sure that lower back issues don't become an issue in the future as well. So today's title of this episode is how to fix your seated slouched over posture. And so I want to tell you all the different things that you can add to your exercise routines. And you can even do just when you wake up in the morning to combat that slouched over posture. So one thing we have to keep in mind is why does our posture in the first place start to get poor when we are seated for a long period of time? And the reason is this, our bodies weren't meant to be seated at this right angle, basically feet on the floor or feet on the gas pedal on the floor in our car butt in the seat and our bodies, the upper body just up straight. So what happens is our legs are a right angle. And what that is, is our hamstring then is shortened. Meaning like if you extend your foot out in front of you and your leg is straight, then that means the muscle in the back of your leg, your hamstring is then extended and straight. But when you bend it and you bend your heel towards your glute, that tightens that hamstring muscle. All right. So that shortens it. That's going to be important. I'm going to talk about that in one moment. Now, the other thing is In your hip, right in your groin is something called your psoas muscle or one of your hip flexors. It's always called your hip flexor. Now, you have many hip flexors, but your psoas is just what a lot of people talk of as their hip flexor. Now, when that gets tight, keep in mind that specific muscle, the psoas major, psoas minor as well, but psoas major connects actually to the spine. A lot of people don't know this. They, they kind of glaze over it. But believe it or not, that psoas muscle connects to even the bottom of the mid-back, which is called the thoracic vertebrae. Now, there's 12 thoracic vertebrae. And those are all the kind of like where the discs sit in your back. Those are all the bones that kind of hold those discs in between. Now, the 12th vertebrae is the very last vertebrae in the mid-back. After that, what we have is the lower lumbar vertebrae, and there's five of those. So basically, your psoas muscle connects to your lower back, all four right before L5 of those discs, and I should say vertebrae, and part of your mid-back. So think about this. Your psoas on the front of your body goes over your hip and connects to your back muscles, and it pulls on your back. So now if you're in the seated position, your lower back is getting tugged on, pulled on the whole time you're doing that. And so you can see now, that's how your lower back starts to get that specific strain on it as well. And that's why it's so important to open up the hips, right? So let's talk about that now. That, that's our main talk for today, these, these specific things. The easy thing is you can do a seated or a lying hamstring stretch where your one leg is out straight, one leg is pulled up towards over your hips only as far as you can go, and you're stretching that leg straight on a chair, and you can extend that leg, and you can also stretch that hamstring out. Now, the other thing is the warrior pose from yoga or also just kneeling down on both knees and then lunging forward. One leg in front, just kind of lunge forward is going to stretch the psoas muscles. If we can open up these two muscles specifically, what we can do is we can start to realign the hips and get less pull on the lower back, get less pull on the spine in general. Now, your back is obviously going to be a whole lot healthier and happier if it doesn't have any muscles pulling and tugging on it. Because keep in mind, everyone's always looking to stretch their lower back. But believe it or not, the lower back itself is meant to be pretty solid, 
pretty structural, pretty locked in place. The thoracic back, the muscles above the lower back, and the muscles in the hips that are supposed to be a lot more mobile. They're supposed to be more flexible. You're supposed to be able to move those around so that your lower back doesn't have to do all the twisting. There shouldn't be a whole lot of twisting going on with that lower back. The twisting should come from your mid back and rotation from the hips. Very, very important. Now, Always keep in mind the body moves from the ground up. We need loose ankles. We need kind of very flexible calves, very flexible hamstrings, solid knees, and solid lower back. Really important. So now let's get in the exercise part of it. What can you do to help combat that posture? Well, really easy things like super simple things that you can do when you wake up that you can add to your exercises. And the biggest one is simply doing a bridge. And what's a bridge? Well, you can lie on a stability ball with only your head and shoulders supported, or you can lie right on the floor. Either way, it's the same thing. You're going to push your hips up in the air, push your hips off the floor, and try to keep the knees fairly close together. You can even put a towel between your knees or a ball between the knees, a small ball, and you're going to push those hips up. And all I want you to do is just hold that pose. Don't worry about going up and down for now. Hold a static pose, not moving at all, with your hips up in the air. That's called a bridge. Squeeze your glutes together. Don't overload your hamstrings. Don't overload your lower back. Squeeze your glutes together. When you do that, you're then starting to activate the glutes, which for the most part are shut off when you're seated. You know, one of the reasons why people's glutes start to sag too when they walk, I mean, stuck to sag as they get older is when they're walking, they're not activating those muscles. They're not squeezing the glutes when they walk. And also when they're seated, the glutes are turned off, right? That's just the way it works because you're seated. You're not activating them. You're not working them. Really, really important. Now, other great exercises you can do are this. You can do supermans, where instead of lying on your back, pushing your hips up, you're lying on your stomach, you're either lying on the floor with your arms extended and legs extended, and you're lifting both arms and both feet at the same time, or one arm and one leg across the body, and all you're doing again is just squeezing the glutes. That's the most important thing. If you squeeze your glutes, why am I saying squeeze your glutes? Well, if you squeeze your glutes... The glutes are an antagonist, which just meaning it's an opposing muscle group to the hip flexors, which means if you squeeze your glutes, you're going to open up and stretch those psoas muscles, the hip flexor muscles. Really, really important. So you're going to do your bridging. You're going to do your supermans. Really important exercise. You can do them when you wake up. You can do them any time of the day that you want. Okay. Another great one to do is what's called a wheel. Now, a wheel's more advanced, but you can start by just lying over a stability ball. Keep your feet on the floor and just lie or roll backwards until your hands touch the ground. Now you have your feet on the ground, you have your hands on the ground, and you have the ball under your back. Now you're just going to look up and you're going to push those hips up in the air and you're going to be creating what's called basically a half moon or upside down or backwards um, wheel. Now why is this important? Well, think about it. If you're over a computer or if you're at your car or desk, what are you doing? You're hunched forward, right? Your knees are forward, your shoulders are forward, your head's forward, your arms are forward. Now what's a wheel? It's the exact opposite motion. Your head Heads back, your chest is open, your hip flexors are open, your knees are back. So what you're doing is the exact opposite motion. So if you're making what looks like maybe like the letter C forward, you're making the C now backwards upside down. And what that's doing is it's stretching all the muscles on the front of your body and tightening all the muscles in the glutes and just shoulders, pinning everything back and allowing you to open up the whole front of your body. Really great pose. As long as you don't have high blood pressure, as long as you're not pregnant, you should be able to do this for about 30 seconds, just stretching, no problem at all. It actually, it feels fantastic, reverses blood flow, really great. Okay, other great exercise you can do with this. Any exercise that's a deadlift, a Romanian deadlift, or even a regular deadlift where the weights are low, kind of around your thighs, you're stretching your hips backwards, which is opening up and stretching your hamstrings, working your glutes, and then as you pull the weights to the top, you pull your shoulder blades back, and that's working on posture again. So again, all these videos can be found. If you just go to YouTube, I have, I don't know, 200 videos on YouTube that I've done with um, dartdiet.com that I'm just been as their fitness expert showing all these different exercises. You can just type in deadlift, Romanian deadlift, bridge, wheel, superman. You'll see all of these great exercises. And one more, one more exercise that's really easy to do is lying on your stomach, hands underneath your chest, elbows underneath your chest. And what you're going to do is you're just going to slowly push up just with your chest off the floor, head off the floor, keep your hips in contact with the floor, keep your legs extended straight. And what this is going to do is called a cobra stretch. And you're just going to look up and you're going to stretch your abs, stretch your chest, and it even stretches your hip flexors a little bit as well. Great stretch helps to combat a little bit of um, the tight muscles in the neck, tight muscles through the chest and abdomen and hip flexors, psoas muscles as well. Really nice stretch. That's called a cobra stretch. Okay, so hopefully today's episode just showed you that 
you're not going to be able to escape sitting down, right? You might sit down for a living. You might have a commute that's a half hour to an hour each way. Um, Bottom line, we're all going to be seated during our lifetime. It is our job then to use exercise and stretching to combat that terrible posture, that slouched over posture, so that your shoulders aren't rounded forward, so that your lower back doesn't get rounded, doesn't get um, all tightened up. And you can do that very easily. Like literally, I would say five minutes a day, that's all it's going to take to strengthen the muscles that need to be strengthened, to work the muscles, to activate the muscles that you need to combat this slouched over posture. Hopefully today's episode was helpful. Please email in just by going to stephencabral.com forward slash askcabral with any questions that you may have exercise related, and I would be happy to answer those on the house call editions of the Cabral Concept. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.